There is no shortage of completely mad villains in the DC Universe, and definitely no shortage of them in Gotham. Batman seems to attract the absolute worst of the worst, and luckily for the citizens of his city, most of those baddies end up in specially crafted holding cells in Arkham Asylum. So today we are returning to our list of the top 10 most dangerous inmates in Arkham Asylum, with a part 2. While these villains are arguably a little less dangerous than the likes of the Joker or Bane or Poison Ivy or all of the ones on our part 1, all of the criminals that we are talking about today have proven themselves to be deadly foes of the Dark Knights in the past, and are great threats to the public, and sometimes themselves. So with that in mind, let's get to it. And at number 10, Mr. Freeze. There is no doubt that Mr. Freeze, aka Victor Fries, is one of Batman's most deadly foes. He's a former cryogenics expert who got into a lab accident when trying to cure his terminally ill wife. He builds himself a criminal empire in order to have the funds to continue his research. Freeze ends up at the bottom of our list primarily because he's a villain who often cooperates quite well with Arkham staff, and his tragic and complex nature often lends him to be a more empathetic villain. Compared to the others on our list, or our part 1, Mr. Freeze isn't really trying to vindictively kill others in Arkham. On some occasions, he's even been allowed to continue his research while locked up there, and he's considered one of the only sane inmates in the asylum, primarily there because of its intensive security and ability to have specialized holding cells, which Freeze needs in order to maintain his body temperature and stay alive. And at number 9, Two-Face. Harvey Dent first appeared in Detective Comics issue 66 back in 1942, making him one of the longest running adversaries of Bruce Wayne's. After acidic chemicals are thrown at him during a court trial, the once Gotham City District Attorney went insane, adopting the criminal persona of Two-Face thanks to his appearance. Becoming obsessed with the concepts of chance and fate, the character is often depicted as schizophrenic, bipolar, or having some sort of disassociative identity disorder. Meaning, he is exactly the kind of individual who, based on his criminal record, needs to be in Arkham, despite the facility's extraordinary track record when it comes to not reforming its inmates. In his post-crisis depiction, Dent had always had mental health issues, but managed to hide them thanks to his unyielding work ethic. Regardless of that, Two-Face is List of crimes is quite massive, and his unpredictability makes him a force of nature that needs to be approached with severe caution. And at eight, Lex Luthor. Ah, yes, the DCEU Lex Luthor. Like much of the rest of Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, Luthor got a whole lot of hate for being a very weird depiction of the supervillain. He was sort of like the Joker meets the Riddler meets Jesse Eisenberg with a shaved head. Anywho, he ended up getting thrown into Arkham, which is something that's revealed in the Ultimate Edition of the film, with some dialogue noting that Batman pulled some strings to get him transferred there. Lex managed to break out of Arkham after hearing about Superman's resurrection and the formation of the Justice League, proving once again that Arkham, even in its cinematic adaptations, is super easy to break out of. Seriously, how many times has the Joker broken out? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. And at 7, Deadshot. Deadshot might not be the first character to come to mind when you think of deadly Arkham inmates, but do not be fooled. He's the most dangerous assassin in Gotham City, and knows his way around a ton of firearms, using them as his main MO. Initially, he found himself being locked away in Blackgate Prison, but ended up being sent over to Arkham when he proved that he required a special maximum security facility in order to keep him in check. And at 6, The Riddler. Edward Nygma first hit the scene in DC's comics back in 1948, in Detective Comics issue 140. He's a criminal mastermind with a genius level intellect capable of extraordinary lateral thinking when it comes to formulating puzzles and decoding them. Arguably his deductive abilities gives the Dark Knight a run for his money. With no superhuman abilities and relying on being a brilliant strategist, the Riddler often gets real creative with his, well, riddles and traps, making him someone that any old civilian or criminal needs to be extremely cautious when in close proximity to. And at number 5, Dr. Phosphorus. Hey, you know what's dangerous? Someone who has burning skin, and also emits toxic fumes, and can manipulate radiation. All of those things are just pretty unsettling for human beings in general to be around, in my personal opinion. I don't know, whatever floats your boat, if not. So naturally, not a huge fan of Dr. Phosphorus, hypothetically speaking, if he was real. Dr. Phosphorus is a dude named Dr. Alex Satoris, who first appeared in Detective Comics issue 469 in 1977. After a crack in a reactor core caused the doctor to get 5 million slivers of radioactive hot sand into his body, his physicality greatly transformed into a body that 
burns forever, quite literally. A power that he only gains better control over when he sells his soul to Neron in order to be able to wear things like clothes. Yeah. He uses his powers to get revenge against those he blames as being responsible for his terrible fate, which ends up leaving him to cross paths with good old Batman, with him being tossed into Arkham as the result. Now, he's not a villain who generally makes the rounds a whole lot, but considering his condition, he's no doubt a danger to those around him. And to anyone who tries to fight him. Not a, not a fan of getting burned. And at number 4, Black Mask. Back during the battle for the Cowl event, a pre New 52 storyline, Jeremiah Arkham, who was the chief psychologist and head administrator of Arkham Asylum, lost his mind, which has like happened a few times, and ended up taking on the identity of Black Mask after a project to rebuild the asylum went haywire. Now, throughout the storyline, as we see Jeremiah becoming increasingly unhinged, it's eventually revealed that he is actually Black Mask, orchestrating all of these terrible things to happen in the asylum. How did he end up as Black Mask? Well, it's all thanks to the influence of Hugo Strange and the Joker. There's also a brief moment where he appears he might return to sanity, but then that's all kind of shot to sh all in all, having the dude who, you know, ran the asylum turn out to be one of the bad guys who's actually hurting others in the asylum and coming up with terrible master plans. Yeah, a little unsettling. Definitely not the ideal inmate. And at number three, Scarecrow. Scarecrow is the master of fear. First appearing in World's Finest Comics issue 3 back in 1941, Jonathan Crane has occasionally been depicted on alternate Earths as a staff member working at Arkham Asylum who is driven mad by the environment. But as far as the main continuity is concerned, he's always been much more of an inmate. Crane is an expert in psychology and biochemistry, and uses fear inducing drugs and toxins that cause those affected to severely hallucinate experiencing their worst nightmares. He is quite literally addicted to fear, and one of the only things he himself fears is Batman, which causes him to compulsively seek out confrontations with the Dark Knight. And there's nothing quite like an addiction to motivate you. Causing trouble at Arkham or attempting to break out isn't out of the norm for him. All to get Bat's attention. Perhaps the most terrifying iteration of the Scarecrow in Arkham Asylum though comes from the Arkhamverse video games in Arkham Asylum. The Scarecrow is featured in arguably one of the best and scariest boss battles in the entire franchise, with Bruce experiencing extremely traumatizing moments based on his past, all thanks to Scarecrow's fear gas affecting him. It's an excellent level design that really encompasses so much of what Batman is all about, all while allowing the Scarecrow to really shine at his most deadliest. And at number 2, Hugo Strange. Hugo Strange is another example of a character who has gone from being an Arkham staff member to someone who has gone entirely mentally insane, depending on which alternate earth depiction of him you're looking at. The character is one of Batman's earliest reoccurring villains, having first appeared in Detective Comics issue 36 back in 1940. He debuted as a mad scientist bad guy who uses something called a concentrated lightning machine to create dense fog in order to allow his gang to rob banks unseen. Batman stops him and Strange manages to set a trap for him, but eventually the Dark Knight is victorious and ships him off to jail. Strange's next appearance features him breaking out of the city asylum, prior to it being given the name Arkham. He uses five other inmates as test subjects turning them into 15 foot tall monsters. Fast forward to post crisis, his origin story changes, with him initially helping a police task force capture Batman, becoming absolutely obsessed with the Cape Crusader. He ends up using inmates from Arkham to test out his experiments before having a mental breakdown of his own. His obsession with Batman and his genius level intellect, along with his mastery of chemicals and psychology, makes him a threat to anyone locked up with him. He's been known to manipulate the worst of individuals. In addition to that, he plays a massive role in the Arkham City video game, with him being a ringmaster of sorts. It's all about manipulation with Doctor Strange. And he's not Doctor Strange, he's Hugo Strange. It's all about manipulation with Hugo Strange. And finally, in at number one, Bruce Wayne. No one said this list had to only be bad guys. Batman has been admitted to Arkham on several occasions. And actually, Bruce Wayne's admission to Arkham is the entrance point for the storyline in the Arkham City video game. In that case, Bruce ends up getting admitted so he can put an end to the chaos that's now brewing inside of the newly established Arkham City, dragging him into a bigger plot by Hugo Strange and ultimately the Joker, in what is arguably the best written game of the series and one of the best superhero video games of all time. Anywho, in the comics, Batman was once admitted to Arkham after Jeremiah Arkham had rebuilt the the facility in order to test out its effectiveness and functionality, which ultimately led to Black Mask throwing Batman into a cage match against other inmates. Hmm. Generally, his stints in Arkham are voluntary, but that still does make him an inmate. And hey, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely would not want to be locked up in there with him, especially if I was a criminal. 
no bueno. All right, there we have it, friends. What other inmates do you think deserve to be on this list? Give us a shout in those comments below and share your thoughts. And be sure to check out our part one if you haven't already. If you dug this video, hey, why not spread the love and hit that like button? And be sure to subscribe and become part of the Nerd Squad. We'd love it if you stuck around some more. In the meantime, though, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you all in the next video.